joining us at Kickerilla Mission Preserve. I'm Ranger Rose, and today we're going to talk about some lookalikes in nature. One of the most useful lookalikes that we're going to talk about is how to identify poison ivy from things that are not poison ivy. Now, it's important to remember that you should still always stay on the trail because it's safest not to come into contact with poison ivy if you never come across its path. But it is still a useful skill to have. So we're going to look at a few different plants that are growing all around each other and one of them is poison ivy and the other two are common lookalikes. So the first one we'll point out is something you should avoid touching which is why I'm protecting my hands with gloves. Um, this plant right here is poison ivy. Now a lot of people have heard the saying leaves of three let it be. While that can be useful to remember how many leaves poison ivy has what you'll see in a minute is a lot of other plants also have three leaves. So it's important to know the characteristics to properly identify it. Now here we have a poison ivy plant with three leaflets. Um, and the way you identify it is by looking at the structure of the leaflets. The first one here in the middle is if a symmetrical leaf. So if we were to take this leaflet and fold it in half, it would be nearly a mirror image from itself. The other two leaflets on the side are not symmetrical leaves. If we were to take this leaf and fold it in half, it would not be symmetrical in any way. I also like to remember the outside two leaves kind of look like somebody has on mittens. So these two leaves here, if you hold your hands together like this and wiggle your thumbs, that's kind of what a poison ivy leaflet looks like on the two outside edges. Now one of the common lookalikes for poison ivy is this plant right here, which is dewberry. Dewberry can have three leaflets or five leaflets, and this one here has five. One thing to notice though that is different is uh, the leaflets on dewberry are always symmetrical. So if we were to fold any of these leaves directly in half, we would have nearly a mirror image of the other side. Another feature to note on dewberry is that dewberry has thorns. If you've ever tried to pick a berry, you would have found this already. So dewberries have thorns, poison ivy never has thorns. The last lookalike for poison ivy I'm gonna show you today is called Virginia creeper. And it's growing right here next to a poison ivy plant. So if you can see, these leaflets are also perfectly symmetrical. If we were to fold all of these leaflets down the middle, they would be nearly a mirror image. Now sometimes plants can lose leaves, so Virginia creeper usually has five leaflets that all join in one spot at the stem. This plant has lost just one of its leaves, so this Virginia creeper has four leaflets, but if you look here right next to it are some more Virginia creeper leaves, and they do have the five leaflets that are all coming from one point along the stem. Now, another thing that's important to know about poison ivy is it can grow in a few different forms. One form that it grows as a vine is it can spread along the ground and just grow as a vine network along the ground. So along the ground here, we have a lot of poison ivy that's covering this whole area mixed in with some of the other vines that we talked about earlier, the dewberry and the Virginia creeper. Also in this area, we have poison ivy growing in another form, which is as it grows in a vine up a tree. If you see this tree here, there's some poison ivy leaflets here that are starting to climb and grow up this tree. And they'll continue to climb all the way to the top. Now as poison ivy grows, just like trees, it puts on wood on its main stem right here on the trunk and it can grow larger and larger and larger until the vine could be nearly as big as the trunk of this tree here. An important thing to know about poison ivy is that it can lose its leaves in the fall and it usually does, but all parts of poison ivy have the toxin that if you're allergic will cause a rash. So if this vine lost all of its leaves and I were to touch the vine right here, which is actually the root of this plant, I could still get that oil on my skin and develop a rash and never know that I touched poison ivy on this tree here. Here we have another example of poison ivy. This time it's a large vine growing all the way to the top of a canopy of a pine tree. 
There's also trumpet creeper growing on this tree as well. So let's take a closer look at some of the vines growing on this tree. If we look here, you can see two different types of vines. This vine right here is a poison ivy vine. Another saying that people use to help remember what poison ivy can look like is if it's hairy, it's scary. And you can see that illustrated here with all of these different um, fibers that are growing off of this root here. All of these different fibers are actually teeny tiny root hairs from the vine, which is a root growing up the tree. So if I were to touch this vine with my bare hand, I would definitely get a rash. Now let's look at another vine growing next to it. This vine right here is a little bit more fibrous than the poison ivy vine, and you can see it looks like it could be flaked off by pulling it. This vine is not poison ivy. This is the vine from the trumpet creeper growing at the top of the tree as well. So you can have more than one vine growing on the same tree. And a good rule of thumb is, if you don't know what it is, just don't touch it. Let's take a look at poison ivy growing in a different form. Sometimes poison ivy can grow large enough and long enough that it can lose the characteristic thumbs that we talked about before. So if you look at this leaflet here, you'll notice that it has lost those thumbs, but if we were to take these two outside leaflets and fold them in half, they still would be non-symmetrical. The center leaf would still be mostly symmetrical. Now, keep in mind that every part of the poison ivy plant has the chemical toxin. So if I were to touch this bare branch with my bare skin, I would definitely get a rash. So keep that in mind in the winter time as poison ivy has lost its leaves you brush up against some branches overhanging the trail, if it's poison ivy, you can still get a rash. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to stay safe on the trails.